You're listening to Puma Podcast. Hi, I'm Bella Perez Rubio, Puma Podcast, and you're listening to Teka Teka News. We want to help. Ito kasi ang mga Afghan na tumulong sa mga Amerikano nung gera. Tapos biglang umalis ang mga Amerikano na iwan ito. Ang katotohanan, pinapatay talaga sila ng kalaban. Nearly two years ago, the U.S. pulled all of its remaining troops from Afghanistan. Chaos ensued as the country swiftly fell back under Taliban rule. Many Afghan citizens who worked for the U.S. were left behind, endangering them and their families. Now the U.S. wants the Philippines to temporarily host their former employees who are waiting on their visas. The request is coming from the highest levels of American government, including President Joe Biden. But Manila is still weighing the proposal as lawmakers, security officials, and stakeholders raise concerns. We uh, do not in any way attempt to influence or curtail the president's almost absolute power in forging foreign policy. However, by the rubric of simple reasonableness, this appears to be outlandish given the bending of rules required. That's the president's sister, Senator Amy Marcos. In June, as chair of the Foreign Relations Panel, she led a hearing on Washington's proposal to Manila. The first issue taken up was how long it took for the U.S. Embassy and the DFA to disclose the request made by Washington last year. The public first became aware of it just this June. One of the chief resource persons questioned was Ambassador to the U.S., Jose Romualdez, second cousin to both Senator and President Marcos. Ambassador Romualdez, you maintained that there was no secret to the U.S. proposal to allow the entry and temporary housing of the nationals from Afghanistan. May we know how the request was made? Uh, yes, there was a formal request that we received at the embassy, but it was also followed up uh, with us uh, through the State Department whether this is possible for us to uh, consider. And so we immediately sent this uh, request to the Department of Foreign Affairs and uh, the secretary and I spoke about it briefly and he said that he was going to have this studied uh, before any action could be taken. Here's Foreign Secretary Enrique Manalo, who was at the same hearing. The idea was to, uh, to allow Afghans formerly employed by the U.S. government and their qualified dependents to temporarily stay in the Philippines to process their SIV applications with the U.S. Embassy in Manila. SIV stands for Special Immigrant Visas. It's permanent residence granted by the U.S. to people who aided its government abroad. By law, Afghan nationals applying for this visa are required to apply from a third country. The DFA explained that it didn't publicize the request because it wanted to consult relevant agencies first. In fact, within less than a month of receiving it, they convened an interagency meeting with the Departments of Defense, Justice, and the Police. Agencies including the National Intelligence Coordinating Agency, the Department of Education, and the National Commission on Muslim Filipinos have also been looped in since then. The ambassador says that thereafter, the State Department also reiterated the request directly to the DFA. Is that correct? The Secretary of State directly uh, raised this with me on a few occasions, verbally, and also uh, in a letter. President Biden also briefly raised the issue with President Marcos during the visit last May. Senators also wanted to know exactly how many Afghans would the Philippines receive under the agreement and who would foot the bill for all the costs involved. They were telling us that uh, they would like to see if they can bring in at least a thousand uh, per batch. Uh, however, I just want to point out that it is really completely up to us we can have it a thousand each time and they will repatriate it to the United States once they receive their SIVs or they will bring in perhaps uh, one or two thousand. It depends on the kind of um, boarding or lodging that they will provide, which all, all of these, they will be uh, at their expense. 
If Manila and Washington come to an agreement, the Philippine visa granted to Afghan nationals would allow them a stay of just 30 to 59 days here. So what happens if their U.S. visa applications take longer than that? And what happens if their application is denied by the U.S.? Here's Secretary Manalo again. The processing for these visa cases would take 30 to 60 days, after which the U.S. government would transport these Afghan nationals to the United States for permanent resettlement or, if found ineligible, to another country. Legally, these Afghan nationals are not refugees, which is one of the reasons why the process of taking them in is so complex. But if the U.S. denies their visa requests, that will effectively turn them into refugees. Needless to say, the stakes are high. Concerns have also been raised over the possible security risks posed by the U.S. proposal. More on that after a quick break. You said that rigorous security vetting has already been done by the United States government. What about the Philippine government? Are we able to undertake rigorous security vetting and background checks? Senator Marcos also questioned if the relatively small staff of our embassy in Islamabad, who would oversee the Philippine visa applications of Afghan nationals, could handle the workload. Here's Defense Secretary Gilbert Tudoro. If the category would be former U.S. government employees, then the job is much easier because they would have been vetted in the first place before they would have been hired. Admittedly, there are problems with their family members, if ever, who were not vetted. And that is one of the issues that we would want to go through. Uh, what kind of vetting did they go through in the first place? which I personally wonder if the other agencies, what standard they will apply. Yes, the NBI has questioned that. So have uh, some papers from the PNP questioning our ability to actually vet the incoming Afghans. Once they arrive in country, then we can, of course, take precautions as to what they may do. For example, like even in, in voice calls or whatnot, we can have them sign uh, certain waivers. This phone call is being recorded for your protection. However, insofar as their backgrounds are concerned, there definitely will be some gaps. However, insofar as the NSC position is, depending on the arrangements made for their stay here, the number of those that will be agreed upon, the risk is low. The other consideration is NBI has mentioned the presence of sleepers among Afghan applicants as being highly probable, that the presence of SIV applicants could make the Philippines a target for Taliban and its splinter groups. Is that a reality? Here's what NBI Deputy Director Jose Yap had to say. Uh, I think the apprehension we noted is that uh, they may have uh, sympathizers from the southern Philippines, from our Muslim brothers. So that is a possibility, Madam Chair. And here's Attorney Mangay Guru Jr. from the National Commission of Muslim Filipinos. We are not particularly concerned about the infiltration or the sleepers uh, among this coming Afghanistan, but more of uh, being a target of an attack. Just recently, an incident happened in Marawi again concerning uh, the same group who caused the Marawi siege. So apparently they're regrouping and uh, they're growing in numbers because of the continuous problems in Marawi that up until now, most of these uh, affected by the Marawi siege, they have not returned to their uh, homeland. So these are the concerns for the uh, Mos uh, National Commission on Muslim Filipinos because if their mobility will not be limited and even if their mobility will be limited, uh, these people from the south or these uh, sympathizers of the uh, ISIS-inspired group can easily, you know, travel to uh, Luzon. We agree with the Security uh, Council that as far as the infiltration of Taliban inspired from this Afghanistan, that is very slim. But for the uh, security uh, concerns of those within the Philippines already, like the sympathizers of these uh, leftist groups. 
That brings us to the big question that prompted a Senate hearing in the first place. Why did the U.S. ask the Philippines for this? Senator Marcos pointed out that countries like Qatar and the United Arab Emirates which are already hosting a significant number of Afghan nationals waiting on U.S. visas, appear to be more logical candidates. The Philippines, meanwhile, is thousands of miles away from both the U.S. and Afghanistan. Here's Ambassador Ramualdez. Let's put it this way. Ang tingin nila, we are an ally of the United States. So, tinanong nila sa atin kung that we are willing to do this. We've had a history of really accepting this even from before. For instance, yung ginawa ni President Manuel Quezon, hanggang ngayon, dito sa Amerika, yung American Jewish community, lagi nilang sinasabi nila ang Pilipinas ay talagang nakatulong sa kanila. The United Nations said President Manuel Quezon's open-door policy saved nearly 1,300 Jewish refugees fleeing the Holocaust. They're really going out of their way rin whenever they can. Marami nagsasabi sa akin sa Israel, yung ating mga OFWs, iba yung trato sa kanila. They give them special care dahil sa ginawa nung ni President Quezon. So I, I assume that even if they're not refugees, we have a reputation for being able to be open in helping uh, people in distress. Ambassador Ramaldez estimates that the Philippine government will decide on Washington's ask by mid-July. On June 29, President Marcos was asked about the request. Here's what he said. We're still looking exactly at how to make it work if we can. It's, it's, it's entirely possible that we will not find a way to make it happen. There are security issues. We have to be conscious of that. But there are even more difficult legal and uh, logistical issues. Because if the plan runs exactly as it's planned, di maganda, wala tayong problema. But what plan ever run exactly as you had hoped? So, what if something goes wrong? Paano kung magka-delay? Paano kung hindi tanggapin yung tao? Yun, yun, yung aming pinag-uusapan. And we'll continue because we want to help. There's still quite a few issues that we have to hammer out. Uh, with the Americans. We, in principle, we would like to help. We took in the Vietnam boat people. We took in the German Jews during the war. Ganyan naman ang ugali ng Pilipino eh. Dahil matulungin tayo. But again, we have to make sure that it's not something that will affect the lives of ordinary Filipinos. And that was today's episode of Teka Teka News. Again, I'm Bella Perez Rubio. This episode was edited by Pedoy Blanco. Our executive producer is Jill Daniel Caro, and our senior news editor is Veronica Uwe. Follow Teka Teka News on your favorite podcast app, or listen to us for free on YouTube. Thanks for listening.